Aircraft carriers, they're the most powerful and versatile warships in the world, capable of projecting military power across vast distances and protecting national interests in far-flung regions of the world. So for today's video, I'm going to count down the top 15 most powerful aircraft carriers in the world. Number 15. The USS Gerald R. Ford Named after the 38th President of the United States, the Gerald R. Ford-class aircraft carriers are the largest in the world. The first carrier in their class, the USS Gerald R. Ford, was commissioned in May of 2017, with another four vessels announced shortly after. The Gerald R. Ford left for its first deployment in 2022 and has a full load displacement of 100,000 tons with a 250-foot-wide flight deck that features an electromagnetic launch aircraft system, a state-of-the-art advanced arresting gear, and dual-band air search radar. She'll also have enough capacity for a total of 75 aircraft and over 4,500 onboard personnel. The Ford is packing a lot of heat when she's roaming around in the oceans. Aside from the aircraft, she carries plenty of her own weapons. Defensive weapons on the Ford class include two launchers with 16 evolved Sea Sparrow missiles each. These missiles are used against incoming, high-speed, maneuvering anti-ship missiles. It also has two launchers with 21 rolling airframe missiles that are also used against anti-ship missiles at close range. Also, there are four 20mm phalanx close-in weapon systems. In all, the USS Gerald Ford cost the United States Navy an impressive $13 billion and will undoubtedly go down as one of the best aircraft carriers of all time. Number 14. The Nimitz Class Another shining example of the United States Navy's power, the Nimitz-class nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are the second largest of their kind in the world. When it comes to the largest class, they are the best of the best and show off all the features you'd expect from when it comes to this type of vessel. They are incredibly deadly and have a four and a half acre flight deck that can carry up to 60 aircraft at once. The Nimitz class houses up to 3,200 members of the ship's company, 1,500 air wing and another 500 crew members. The entire ship's powered by two large nuclear reactors and can reach a top speed of about 30 knots and has a total displacement of 97,000 tons. Needless to say, this thing is huge. The Nimitz class was originally constructed in 1968 and launched in 1972 as a multi-role carrier and served in some important campaigns in the Persian Gulf and was even used during humanitarian efforts. As the primary means of American power projection, the ships of the Nimitz class have seen a considerable amount of use around the hotspots of the world. The first USS Nimitz commissioned in May of 1975 was the base for the abortive Iranian hostage rescue mission in 1980. In 1981, her fighters were in action against Libya. Moving from the Atlantic to the Pacific in 1987, the Nimitz deployed to the Persian Gulf and Asian waters on numerous occasions over the next decade. In 1998, the carrier returned to Norfolk for a two-year refueling refit, which was complete in 2001. After finally decommissioning the illustrious USS Enterprise in 2017, which we'll get to later, the USS Nimitz became the oldest aircraft carrier in service with the US Navy. Other Nimitz-class carriers would serve in American-involved conflicts like the Iraq invasion of Kuwait and the war in Afghanistan. Number 13. Charles de Gaulle as the 20th century was coming to a close, people felt like we were going to be jettisoned into the future and take the next giant leap forward in terms of technology. And the French Navy wanted to be part of that journey, which is why they cooked up their new aircraft carrier, the Charles de Gaulle. Entering service in 2001, this carrier is named after the famous French World War II hero and eventual prime minister of the same name. So needless to say, this aircraft carrier has a lot to live up to. Thankfully, it's able to deliver on just about all fronts. For starters, the Charles de Gaulle is France's first ever nuclear-powered surface ship and the only nuclear-powered ship to operate outside of the United States. Easily the French Navy's most important flight carrier, the Charles de Gaulle is a 780 by 103 foot ship with a total displacement of 42,500 tons that can easily carry 40 fixed wing fighters and helicopters like the AS-532 Cougar, the E-2C Hawkeye, and the SA-365 Dolphin, just to name a few. And amazingly, the Charles de Gaulle has been built not only for battle, but for stealth as well, even when it travels at top speeds of up to 27 knots. Number 12. Zuikaku Zuikaku represented the pinnacle of Japan's pre-war aircraft carrier development program. Along with her sister ship, the Shokaku, Zuikaku filled out Japan's first air fleet with the addition of two large, fast, modern carriers. Displacing 32,000 tons and capable of carrying 72 aircraft, Suikaku could travel up to 34 knots and absorb a relatively large amount of battle damage, something the Imperial fleet would in fact be doing in the years to come. The size of these new and improved Imperial carriers meant that they could handle a greater operational tempo in the early days of the war. 
After the Pearl Harbor raid, they participated in the Indian Ocean raid, helping to sink the British carrier Hermes along with several other ships. Afterwards, Zuikaku and Shokaku deployed to Port Moresby to cover Japanese landings in what became the Battle of the Coral Sea. Zuikaku survived undamaged and contributed to the sinking of the USS Lexington. Because of the lack of aircraft at the time, she had to sit out the Battle of Midway, known as the turning point of the Pacific Theater. The loss was detrimental to Japan's future in the war. Zuikaku continued to form the core of the Japanese carrier fleet into 1944 participating in and surviving the battles of Guadalcanal, where her aircraft helped sink the USS Hornet and the Battle of the Philippine Sea. But by October 1944, her supply of aircraft and pilots was almost completely exhausted. Japan was known for its stellar navy, but an aircraft carrier is only as strong as the crafts she can deploy. At the Battle of Leyte Gulf, Zuikaku and several other carriers served as bait for Halsey's battleships and carriers, luring them away from the center of the Japanese attack. The last survivor of the Pearl Harbor attack, Zuikaku, sank under a barrage of bombs and torpedoes at the Battle of Cape Engano. Number 11. HMS Illustrious Between September 1939 and April of 1942, the Royal Navy lost five of its seven pre-war aircraft carriers. It became time to act as the war in Europe raged on without the presence of the United States. The HMS Illustrious and her three sisters filled that gap. Laid down in 1937, Illustrious traded aircraft complement for an armored deck, an innovation that would make the ship more robust than her Japanese or American counterparts. Displacing 23,000 tons, Illustrious could travel at 30 knots and carry just 36 aircraft. Her first major achievement came in November of 1940, when her swordfish torpedo bombers attacked the battleship of the Italian Navy at anchor at Taranto. The attack was carried out on a shoestring compared to the greater raids of the Pacific War and nevertheless managed to either sink or heavily damage three Italian battleships. Illustria spent the next few months carrying out raids in the Mediterranean and covering the evacuation of Greece. During the evacuation, she survived several hits from German dive bombers. After receiving repairs in the United States, Illustrious operated against the Japanese in the Indian Ocean. She returned to the European theater later in 1943, making additional raids on Norway and in support of Allied landings in Italy. Later, Illustrious returned to the Pacific, where supplied with superior American carrier aircraft, she helped spearhead the Royal Navy counteroffensive into Southeast Asia. After surviving a kamikaze attack, she returned to Great Britain and eventually served as a training carrier before being scrapped in 1957. The Illustrious saw a lot of fighting for her time, serving in battles that didn't always make it into the history books, but she truly lived up to her name. Things would have been much, much different had she not succeeded every time. Number 10. Queen Elizabeth Class Of course, the largest aircraft carriers in the UK Royal Navy owe their name to none other than Queen Elizabeth. The Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers are the third largest carriers in the world, the biggest warships ever built for the British Navy, and the second largest of the non-US warships after the Japanese Yamato class battleships. And they certainly live up to that prestige. The HMS Queen Elizabeth was commissioned in December of 2017, and the HMS Prince of Wales was commissioned in just 2020. Both vessels are utterly massive, with a displacement of close to 72,000 tons. They're about 918 feet long and can carry up to 40 state-of-the-art fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters. The most impressive aircraft on board has got to be the multiple F-35B stealth multi-role fighters with short takeoff and vertical landing capability. These high-tech fighters can do anything from air defense to ground attack and reconnaissance missions. The F-35 Lightning II has a low radar cross-section due to its stealthy design and radar-absorbent materials. When it comes to helicopters, the Queen Elizabeth class will also operate a mix of CH-47 Chinook, Merlin, and AW-159 helicopters for utility and anti-submarine warfare roles. But don't be shocked to find some Apache attack helicopters thrown into that mix as well. Both vessels feature the latest and greatest in wartime technology and automated systems, but only require a crew of 679 for combat operation, making them some of the most advanced vessels to hit the world's oceans. Number 9. Admiral Kunetsov one of the best carriers currently in service, hands down, is the Russian vessel Admiral Kunetsov. This Kunetsov-class aircraft carrier serves as the flagship of the Russian Navy with a full load displacement of 58,500 tons and is an incredible 1,000 feet long. It serves as a multi-role vessel, and it's absolutely armed to the teeth. You don't want to be on the Admiral Kunetsov's bad side during wartime. She's bringing Su-33s, MiG-29Ks, UBP-STOVL fighters, and a Ka-27 PLO helicopter into the battle, all of which are some of the most advanced military craft to roam the skies today. 
It's got more than enough room to fit the ship's 1960 company, 626 air group, and 40 flagstaff aboard. But perhaps more notable, Admiral Knetsov suffered from a fire at the end of 2019, but the Russian Navy has been able to turn that setback into an opportunity to completely overhaul the ship. By 2023, the Russian Navy is expected to bring the new and improved Admiral Knetsov out into the waters again, complete with new avionics, flight deck, electric equipment, and power plant, as well as a new fully domestic takeoff and landing control system. Number 8. INS Vikramaditya The title of the largest in service of the Indian Navy goes to the crown jewel of their fleet. The INS Vikramaditya just also happens to be one of the biggest aircraft carriers in the world. It's almost 1,000 feet long and is a modified Kiev-class aircraft carrier that entered service quite recently in 2013. This massive aircraft carrier once served the Soviet Navy under the name Baku, as well as the Russian Navy under the name Admiral Gorshkov after the fall of the Soviet Union. But the Indian Navy bought this massive carrier back in January of 2004. Well, technically the ship was given to their Navy for free under the condition that they would pay the $800 million overhaul of the ship and another billion dollars for the aircraft and weapons systems that would be installed. I guess that's not a bad deal, all things considered. The INS Vikramaditya has a maximum displacement of 45,400 tons, meaning it's got no problem carrying around a maximum of 36 aircraft as it navigates the oceans. And just some of the firepower on the tarmac include 26 MiG-29Ks, multi-role fighters, and another 10 Kamov-type helicopters. Number 7. Cavour Alright, well let's take a trip to Italy and see their biggest and baddest aircraft carrier. The Cavour is the flagship of the Italian Navy, and it's easy to see why. First off, it's got a full load displacement of 30,000 tons, which lets you carry all sorts of toys. The defense systems on the Cavour range from short-range defense to massive naval guns to decoy launchers. The Cavour isn't messing around, and then there are the vehicles that are kept on board as well. This aircraft carrier has a flight deck over 760 feet long and 110 feet wide, meaning there's plenty of room for the most advanced fixed-wing aircraft like the AV-3B Harrier and the JSF, plus the EH-101, AB-202, NH-90, and SH-3D helicopters, and the vessel can also hold up to 24 main battle tanks. The Cavour was also built with six diesel generators that carry it through the water at a maximum speed of about 16 knots, so it may not be the fastest aircraft carrier out there, but it's certainly one of the deadliest and the most advanced. It's not the kind of thing you want to see coming towards you on the horizon. Number 6. USS America The first amphibious assault ship to make our list, the USS America, is an aircraft carrier operating under none other than the United States Navy, of course, and it's the first vessel in the fittingly named America class. She's been assigned as the flagship vessel for the United States Amphibious Group in their Navy, which is fitting, seeing how this beast has a total displacement of 45,000 tons. She can carry everyone and just about everything when the going gets tough. The vessel of her class is specially designed to carry helicopters and fighters, with both vertical and short takeoff and landing capabilities. So when she shows up on enemy shores, uh, they better head for the hills, because the USS America is bringing her special Marine Expeditionary Unit into the fray, which includes helicopter gunships and V-22 Osprey tilt rotor aircraft, supported by the insanely fast and deadly F-35B Lightning II. The idea behind her design, aside from being amphibious, is that she's smaller, able to cut through the aquatic battlefield like butter. The US Navy has gone on to call the American-class vessels as lightning carriers. Well, in the event of a war, American class can act as an ad hoc carrier if something like the Nimitz class is being deployed elsewhere. Or if a large carrier is already there, the America class can sail next to them, adding up to 20 more fighter jets to the supercarrier's 44 jets. And if they're near the shoreline, then the enemy needs to be prepared for an amphibious attack, forcing them to prepare for multiple threats at once. But there are, of course, some disadvantages to these Lightning carriers. Because of their smaller size, America-class carriers can't accommodate as many supplies, like fuel and munitions, during a conflict. So in their case, the best defense is a good offense, which is why they house some of the most powerful and advanced military aircraft in the world. Number 5. Juan Carlo I Hailing from Spain, Juan Carlo I is one of the more powerful aircraft carriers in Europe. Named after the former Spanish king, the carrier is the largest ship to ever be constructed by the Spanish Navy. The vessel's 757 feet long with a 105 foot long beam, it has a displacement of 27,000 tons and a range of 9,000 nautical miles, and it cuts through the ocean at a speed of 15 knots. Launched in September of 2009 and commissioned exactly one year later, Juan Carlos is powered by a diesel-electric propulsion system and can attain a maximum speed of 21 knots. It's got a 663-foot deck with a ski jump ramp, and it's equipped with the subsonic AV-8B Harrier II aircraft. 
It's got a multifunctional garage and hangar area on two levels spanning well over 65,000 square feet. This carrier is enormous. Juan Carlos I has 11 decks, including a floating deck, heavy deck, hangar, medium deck, and a flying deck. It can easily accommodate 1,400 personnel, including 890 embarked forces and 247 crew. But what really jettisons this powerful aircraft carrier into the modern age is its unique capability. Juan Carlos I was designed to operate during joint force protection, disaster relief work, and humanitarian assistance, but more importantly, for amphibious operations. Number 4. USS Theodore Roosevelt one of the most dominant aircraft carriers in the world since the 1970s, the USS Theodore Roosevelt has set the bar pretty high for decades. Constructed over a period spanning nearly 35 years, the class continues to provide the core of American naval power. Among the most active of the Nimitz class has been the USS Theodore Roosevelt, the first of the second group of ships. Roosevelt entered service in 1986. She displaces over 100,000 tons, carries between 75 to 80 aircraft, and can make 30 knots at top speed. Roosevelt served in most of the conflicts of the post-Cold War era. In 1991, she launched strikes against Iraqi targets during Operation Desert Storm. In 1999, her aircraft conducted strikes in Kosovo and Serbia in service of Operation Allied Force. After the September 11th attacks, Roosevelt deployed to the Middle East and participated in the first sorties against the Taliban and Al-Qaeda in Operation Enduring Freedom. Two years later, her aircraft flew against Iraqi targets again in the first days of Operation Iraqi Freedom. After a refit, Roosevelt launched strikes against both Afghan and Iraqi targets in the latter part of the decade. Most recently, Roosevelt helped blockade Yemeni ports against a suspected Iranian arms convoy. Number 3. Shandong Relatively new to the global fleet of aircraft carriers, the Shandong was built in 2017. It's the first Chinese aircraft carrier to be built domestically. This carrier's design is largely based on China's first carrier, Liaoning, which was itself built from the partially complete hull of the Soviet Kuznetsov-class aircraft carrier Varyag. It retains the ski jump takeoff, which limits its air wing to helicopters and Shenyang J-15 fighter jets of the People's Liberation Army Navy Air Force, and the ship is powered by conventional oil-fired boilers driving eight steam turbines derived from the Soviet-designed examples installed on Liaoning. It measures 1,001 feet long with a displacement of about 55,000 tons. Shandong can hold up to 44 aircraft, 32 fighters, and 12 helicopters. Today, the carrier's planned wing consists of 32 J-15 air superiority jet fighters, 6 Z-18F anti-submarine and anti-ship helicopters, 4 Z-18Js airborne early warning helicopters, and 2 Z-9C utility helicopters. But Shandong can hold her own as well with an array of onboard heavy weaponry. Shandong's primary weapon system is the HHQ-10 surface-to-air missile system, sporting 24 sealed launch tubes. It rotates a full 360 degrees, and the oscillating design allows for very high elevation and depression. Each missile carries a warhead that reaches Mach 2 in just seconds after being fired, and is effective at both close and short ranges. Flying close to this aircraft carrier is pretty difficult, due in part thanks to the hush-hush nature of the People's Liberation Army Navy. No one quite knows just for sure how much it costs to build one of these things, but the rumors start at around $7 billion. Number 2. USS Midway Easily one of the most famous American carriers in history, the USS Midway entered service in September 1945, shortly after the war in the Pacific ended. She displaced 45,000 tons, could cut through seas at 33 knots, and could carry roughly 100 aircraft. She was, quite literally, a big deal, and the epitome of speaking softly while carrying a big stick. Midway and her sisters represented a step beyond previous Essex-class carriers that had fought in the Pacific War and promised to introduce a new era of naval aviation. She most certainly delivered on that. Upon commissioning, Midway became the world's most lethal aircraft carrier. The offensive power of her air group exceeded that of the Essex carriers then in service. With the introduction of jet aircraft, that gap would only continue to grow, setting the standard for things to come. With the aptly named and deadly A-2 Savage carrier-based bomber, Midway and her sister ships briefly became the only carriers in the world capable of delivering nuclear weapons. They were the Alpha and the Omega, but the work didn't stop there. The Midway underwent extensive modifications over the course of her decorated career, eventually acquiring an angled flight deck. Although she didn't partake in the Korean War, Midway operated off Vietnam and continued to serve as the larger supercarriers entered the fray. She was the favored workhorse during the Gulf War of 1990, and her small size gave her an advantage in maneuverability over the more modern, larger supercarriers. Midway finally left the service in 1992, having spanned the history of naval aviation from the F-6F Hellcat to the F-A-18 Hornet. 
she has seen it all, done it all, and been everywhere and back. Number 1. USS Enterprise CV-6 Not to be confused with a certain starship from the future, the USS Enterprise CV-6 was the seventh vessel of the name and was the sixth aircraft carrier of the United States Navy. This Yorktown-class carrier made her debut back in 1936 and is just one of the three aircraft carriers to be commissioned in the years before World War II. But this iteration of the USS Enterprise saw her fair share of the action, participating in more military actions against the Japanese in the Pacific than any other carrier. That included the attack on Pearl Harbor, where she was the only manned carrier at the time and the first to sustain casualties. The Battle of Midway, the Battle of the Eastern Solomons, the Battle of Santa Cruz Islands, and the list just keeps going. It's a pretty safe bet to say that the USS Enterprise has plenty of stories to tell from those years. She's even earned 20 battle stars for her efforts and was the most decorated U.S. warship during World War II. But the real star on her crown is that she was the first American ship to sink a fully-sized enemy warship, sinking the Japanese submarine I-70 at the end of 1941. But the USS Enterprise was a resilient ship. Having been thought to sink on three separate occasions, she earned the nickname the Grey Ghost from the Japanese. I'll see you next time. Watch our Vehicles playlist for more top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos.